and I think the, the struggle right now for Anna Kornikova is she's saying, wait, um, she's moving better than I am. She's hitting harder than I am. She's uh, uh, hitting the corners better. Her accuracy is better. Love 15. You know, her consistency is there. So she's trying to find anything she can psychologically twist around and say, okay, I've, I've got the edge here. But right now, she does not have the edge anywhere in the, her game. And even that shot by Kornikova, we would have seen it against Bear Banshikova when she was playing the other night. She would have hit this forehand much harder. And right now, she's just placing it. I mean, she knew that she had the winner, but uh, she would have put a lot more authority on the shot. I'm so glad we've all got the skinny on that name now. Bear Banshikova. 15, 30. Every time I say it, though, I wonder, after I finish it, whether I got it all right. Out. Ooh, that was close. Daniel. And that was good news for Kornikova because there's no way she would have had a play on that if it had have landed in. Well, this is 110% tennis, and you've got to wonder 43. whose fitness is going to last longest and how long they can keep this up for. Forty-thirty. This is the first game point that Kornikova has held on her serve in three service games. Deuce. And she wastes it with that wild forehand. You can just see by the expression on her face, she is really struggling out there to try to find a way around Jennifer Capriotti's game. Advantage Capriotti. Well, this is wonderful backhand that sets up this short forehand by Kornikova, and Capriotti's all over it. That's Use. the first wild shot we've seen, isn't it, Andrew, from Capriotti? Yeah, just about. And uh, I think she can afford one or two of those at 4-1 uh, in the first set. Advantage Capriotti. Well, that's not a good sign. We see Kornikova over there. She's tapping her racket strings like maybe the racket isn't strung right. The racket, I'm sure, is strung perfect. But, you know, when, when things aren't going your way, you're trying to find anything that could be the problem. And game. she Capriotti. hits she a double fault to one. lose that game, and she finds herself down triple break in this first set of five one. Yes, uh, Peter Richter, the chair umpire, reads out the bad news for Anna Kornikova. Capriati serving for the set at 5-1. No 15. I think that's the first shot we've seen where it came back with such power from Kornikova it actually put off Capriotti. Ah, now that's more the kind of Kornikova that we saw against Bear Banshikova. No 30. first uh, big piece of luck in this match has gone ominously to Jennifer Capriati. Oh. 15-40. Well, that was just simply her service toss. If you look at it again, the toss was out to the right and in front. It's, that's almost impossible to get into the court. And even there, you can see she had to chase that toss a little bit, just slightly out to the right. And this is the only slightly negative part of Capriotti's game. And there's another double fault. 
So the only two games Capriotti's lost in this first set have been because of double faults, Andrew. Yes, something she really looked like she was shaking out of a system in those first couple of games. It's, it's sometimes a good sign when the bad shots are dispensed with early on, but uh, they are coming back to, to haunt her. And slowly but surely, the Santa Court Arena here at Victoria Park, which is, for our overseas viewers, basically on the uh, mid-north coast of the island of Hong Kong, which is uh, really only a very small part of the, uh, the whole territory of Hong Kong. Well, psychologically, it's a tough road here for Kronikova. She looks at that scoreboard at 5-2, uh. realizing that only because of double faults by Capriotti, she's not down six love and one love. Seats quickly, please. Thank you. Play has been completely dictated by Capriotti so far in this first set. Well, that wasn't the easiest shot to get, but uh, it was a build-up from two superb shots uh, verging on. I think she's she's playing scary. She really is hitting so hard, and it's a shame we don't have a some sort of radar to pick up uh, exactly how fast those ground strokes are going. We'll take a look at this point here. Now, <laughs> Capriotti was out of the point, completely out of the point, it looked like. She stretched out, and she hit the forehand well enough Right here, look at this. Now you'd expect her to lose the point, but she comes back so quickly into the court, sets up, no chance for Kornikova when she hits a shot like that with Capriotti. And look at the movement. This lady is enjoying playing tennis and what a treat for us. We should point out as well, most of uh, Kornikova's short shots from what we've seen have not really been deftly placed. They've been far more defensive desperation shots, and it's setting Capriati up every time. Yeah, a drop shot should be an offensive shot, not a defensive 15, shot. 40. Here you have it, two set points for Capriati. Kornikova came in then. I don't think she particularly wanted to. Comes away with the point, though. I'm sure a sigh of relief. That, that backhand was coming back again like a rocket from Capriotti. Look at this. She just rips it. One of the things from up here we can see easily is the change of pace by Capriotti sometimes. She hits a kind of a floating topspin backhand, which really pulls the pace off the ball. And then the next backhand she hits really, really hard. Or if it comes to her forehand, she just lays into it almost every time. Well, what a boost it would be for Kornikova if she could hold serve. She's lost every single service game she's played so far, which has been three. This is only her second time she's had a game point on her serve. But she would love to be able to start that second set knowing that she could hold serve. Game. Well, she does, and Capriotti leads by five you know, for three. That's a, uh, that's a good sign for Kornikova. She's hanging in there. She's a much more mature player than, of course, she's been in the past. She's still a youngster. She's 19 years old. She's been out there for so long. You, you think of her as like a 22 or 23-year-old, but just 19 years old. Yeah. 
15 low. Kornikova still hasn't forgotten the, uh, the days early in her career where she was uh, held back by tour officials from playing as many tournaments as she would have liked. Purely because of her age, uh, which was ironically a result of what happened to Jennifer Capriati early on in her career. That's right. They, they changed all the rules. Andrea Yeager, Tracy Austin, uh, Capriati, they just said no more. We're going to allow the youngsters to play more than, I think it, they can play seven events during any season until they turn, they turn 17. I mean, she had a pretty good family set up around her, Kornikova, and uh, she understandably said that she was being punished for someone else's problems. Well, that was a tentative backhand. That's a backhand that she should be really hitting. It was a little bit short that time from Capriati, and she just pushed it into the net. Game and first set, Capriati by six games to three. There it goes, a number that Kornikova did not want to hear. Six games to Capriati, three to Kornikova, and the first set goes the way of the American. The tennis Six court here piece. situated Thank you. The second the set. Far Kornikova to serve. Eastern side. Well, I don't know where that um, second win has come from, but Another incredibly, team. it looks like Capriati has actually. Uh, been able to step up a gear, which is a pretty frightening thought for Anna Kornikova. Fifteen all. Capriotti actually out in front of that one. That's the reason she missed the shot. She was actually was playing it too soon. Thirty fifteen. Kornikova knows that this game is crucial to the rest of the match. If she should lose this game, it's just opening the floodgates. 30 all. And not the kind of backhand she wants to hit in this situation. The problem the corner corner face is right here is that when you're getting beaten this badly, and I mean dominated on the court, is you get pummeled to death and you can't think clearly. And so you start making silly errors like that because you're, you don't know which shot to hit, whether you hit cross court, hit deep, you know, hit heavy top spin. You, you just, everything just kind of comes up on the screen of her mind. And then of course she doesn't do anything and she hits it long. One thing Kornikova does know is that whatever shot she does hit at Capriati, it's going to come back at her three times as fast. Well, there you Capriati, you call it right there. Seven. First time for everything. So, Capriati takes the first game of the second set here. And maybe just starting to get a sniff of uh, that final spot. Fifteen oh. minutes. Forcing Kornikova to go for winners. And you can't just go for winners and hope to play really at a top level unless you're playing almost out of the zone, <laughs> not even in the zone. And the final being played down here at Victoria Park tomorrow, Saturday. Ladies will walk out on court at around about 2.30 in the afternoon. 30-15. One of the handful of shots we've seen Capriotti miss. Okay, Kornikova 
angry with somebody up in the crowd. I don't know if it was, uh, I think it may have been a flash, flash from a camera. And she's asked Peter Richter, or at least she's glad at Peter Richter, maybe an announcement uh, again. Game. Couple yards. She needs about two games to left. Well, that wasn't even an effort that time by Kornikova. Well, she said something to somebody in the stands there. But after she looked to the left, I noticed a flash going off to the right and all these amateur photographers trying to get their shots. Well, obviously a lot of wisdom generally in what uh, Shanda Rubin was saying to Don up here in the commentary booth last night that the rankings really don't reflect the way that uh, Capriati, a winner of eight WTA titles over the years, the way that she's playing at the moment. She's ranked 14th in the world, Kornikova is ranked 8th. Well, I had talked the day before with Chanda's coach and he said the same thing. He said that Capriati is playing great. Tennis from the top seed here. 43. Mentioned uh, Shanda Rubin's coach. I think she's the only player here, possibly, who's travelling with a coach that is not a family member. Just about everybody else, surrounded by family. Even uh, Yeo Ging Sin from China is coached by her husband, Zhu Xing. Well, look at the volley that Capriati owns there. That, that yes. looks like a top servant volley. You take a look at this, the racket's out in front. She hardly moves the, the racket face. Just perfectly executed. Breathing a little life into Kornikova's game. Even stretched out, Capriotti makes Kornikova hit another shot. Game point for Kornikova. And she comes to net again. Oh, and she misses her volley. She looked so relaxed. Yes. She was in total control of that point. Well, if you take a look at it again, she lets the racket head slip back behind her a little bit. Not keeping it out in front, and uh, that's the result. Oh, that's a great second serve. Advantage clinical. And that's the big improvement we were talking about at the start there, Andrew. The second serve by Kornikova, she's hitting with such confidence, able to place it around. Now she's got another game point. Game Kornikova. And she does. She holds serve for the first time in this match, I believe. Could have been the second time. Watch the second time she held once in the first. Well, it seems like an eternity since Jennifer Capriati was uh, stunning the world as as a teenager, racking up various records along the way as well. That lady on the left by Wimbledon in 1992. So the middle of the year she became the first, or should I say the youngest player, to pass the one million dollar prize mark, prize money mark, and she was just 16 years and three months of age. 
and in 1990, a couple of years before that, she became the youngest ever player to be ranked in the top 10. And that was done at the age of 14 and 235 days. And that's amazing when you consider Time. that was 10 years ago. Yeah, and, and she's, she's, she's still only 24. That's right. Yeah. Well, she's, uh, she's heading down toward her 25th birthday. That's on Seat March 29, please. born Thank in you. New York. Well, the gurus of tennis and her peers say that she owns it all. She has a good serve. She has a great forehand. She has a solid backhand. She can volley. She can hit overhead. And she can move. Clean overhead, but hit to the right spot. That was hit low on the strings there by Kornikova. This is. Well, Kornikova knows it's now or never. She's got to put the big push on here. She needs to break Capriotti's serve. There's one of the problems you have when you come out hitting the ball so well like Capriotti did in that first set is that when you take just a tiny bit off, everything oh. looks like a setup to your opponent then. And she has taken just a little bit off her, her strokes in his first two points oh. of this game. Now 40. And another double fault. And look at this. Kornikova has three break points to level this second set at two all. Play here by Kornikova. Breathes some life back into Capriotti on this service game. Back to Deuce after a 40 love lead. And Kornikova really shouldn't apologize for that because she's just even to score. Advantage Kornikova. Capriotti having a, a similar piece of good luck in the last set. And that's about as close as it gets as well. Fourth game point. Oh, what an angle by Capriotti. That's just spectacular. <laughs> she has Kornikova talking to herself, what the heck do I have to do out there? Well, Capriotti has almost left me speechless. We've said it all. <laughs> first set that we can almost say about her game. She's doing it all. If she was playing against Venus Williams right now, Venus would have her hands full. Advantage Capriati. Well, let's not forget, though, Kornikova is making the American work for every inch, certainly in this game. Advantage Capriati. Game Capriati. And there it goes. She leads by a three games and one. Capriati rubbing the salt in now. And the 
person that knows what's happening better than all of us is the lady on the screen right now, Anna Konnikova. Fifteen. Totally out of character <laughs> for Capriati to miss it like that. She just didn't get sight on it, obviously. Fifteen all. Kornikova rushing her shots. She just, <laughs> she still hasn't found a rhythm. And we can't blame her. A nice deep shot by Kornikova. Oh, Capriotti's there, but she misses. Well, I think she was pretty exhausted from all that running around. And that was a really well-controlled point by Kornikova. She didn't lose a cool. We, we saw her Early blow 18. a few points like that in the first set. That time she thought, no, I'm not going to mess it up. And she held the reins that time. I found it interesting that Capriotti didn't go down the line with that shot. Uh, she got there early enough. Kornikova was in the wrong position. You could have tr driven a truck down there. But no nothing, nothing takes away the confidence of Capriotti. She has that point that she felt like she should have won. She comes back and rips that backhand up the line on the return. <laughs> Look at that forehand. I mean, it was the serve was just out, but she just hit it. A ton, a lot faster than Kornikova was serving it. Uh, well, she went cross court again that time. She didn't try to hit it so hard. 30 40. Here's the lady here. Look at her come forward. Peak of the bounce. No chance for Kornikova. So, break point again. Capriotti. <laughs> she actually missed a setup forehand. I think it's the first time we've seen a setup forehand missed by Capriotti. Advantage Capriotti. Kornikova, at that time, it didn't look like she rushed it. She just barely missed her shot. This is a very important point for the Russian. Oh, very nice forehand there by Kornikova. News. Either right on the baseline or barely inside the baseline. Looks like uh, Capriotti slipped her on her grip there, trying to get her hand dried off. Well, at that time, she rushed Advantage it. Capriotti. Juice. Well, Capriotti complaining about her grip being slippery and you can't play with your grip not tacky so I'm surprised she didn't get a towel it's definitely Advantage thrown off her, her, her feel it's almost like she doesn't care Just when you think Kornikova is taking charge of the point, Capriotti in a running forehand, she Juice. does this. Just rips it up the line, putting too much pressure on Kornikova. Brings it back to Deuce. Oh, nice shot by Kornikova. Did not overplay at that time. Advantage Kornikova. Good serve, really set up this point. She comes in, takes it at the peak of the bounce. Oh, 
Oh, you, she missed another one. It's got to be disheartening out there for her. She keeps looking off to the stands on the right. I don't know if her coach is sitting over there, but she's pretty disheartened right now. She, this is a must-win game for Kornikova. That's a nice get. I'll tell you, she did so well to get back that return and from Capriati. Again, on the women's tour, and uh, in some matches on the men's tour, returns do not come much faster than that. Kornikova did extremely well to get a handle on it. Deuce. Not the easiest sort of shot to dig out. Well, the biggest difference between the men's and women's games is, is really not the power of the ground strokes. It's the speed of foot around the court. Oh, that's a beautiful shot by Kornikova. She took her time, set up, didn't rush it, got the timing right, and that's what she has to do. Easy to say up here, difficult down there. Beautiful. by Kornikova. Capriani looks like she just pulled back a little bit on her Capriani leads yeah. by three games to two. Yes, she did. And no wonder really at the pace and level that she's been playing at. Maybe she decided enough was enough and she just had to recharge those batteries and she did shift down a couple of gears. But uh, credit to Kornikova. She's, she's just seemed more in control of everything that she's doing. She hasn't, uh, she's not quite so intimidated by the pace and the speed of the uh, shots Capriati, Capriati's hitting. And maybe just reminding herself that she is the top seed and she is the world number eight. And she has improved dramatically over the past 12 months. Still, I would say that Capriotti is still completely in control of her game. Kornikova is still trying to find that, that comfortable spot where she's in control of her game. And that's really what she wants to do. If she can get in control of her game, then she can still make a match of this with Capriotti. And the pace of uh, Capriotti's shots is reflected. 40, just a little along there. Reflected by the uh, pace of the match as well. Just coming up to 53 minutes of play so far. Capriati. She leads by four games to two. She edges ahead just a little more. And ever closer to a berth in the final. A match that she won this time last year. Well, I think I heard Kornikova say there, come on, let's work. And I, that's exactly what she's going to have to do. She's going to have to work to bring this back, this match back. She's going to have to step it up one level. 15 love. No, 
know, that know. was just a rushed shot. She didn't hit it hard, but she rushed it. And that's, uh, that's so typical of somebody whose mind is not working quite right because she feels so much pressure. Thirty fifteen. See, she just takes her time here. Sets up. That's not actually an easy easy ball to hit. It was a very, very high forehand. showing you that she is a class 15. act herself. She can really hit the ball. She can move it around the court. She wasn't ranked number one in doubles at the end of 1999 for no reason. She feels comfortable up around the net. It's just difficult to get to net when Capriotti's hitting well. That's a beautiful shot by Capriotti. You can see it right off her racket. No chance for Kornikova to even move. 43. Look at that. Capriotti, Capriotti owns it all. She can hit every shot in the book. Except an overhead. <laughs> Not against. Kornikova, ball change, please, new ball. Capriotti leads by four games to three. game there for Capriotti. She uh, loses it and also it looks like the confidence starts building a little bit for Kornikova. She seemed much more positive on her service game that time. We'll see if that carries over, if there's a little bit of swing and momentum that's starting to take place here in this match. Some incredible hitting by both players, but Capriotti has been unbelievable in this match from, from the very opening bell. She's been really hitting it and only because of some lapses on her service in that first set that Kornikova even Seats finds herself please. still in the match. Thank you. Capriotti, five double faults in her first two service games. Fifteen now. Capriotti continuing to force the play, just taking it straight at Kornikova, just asking her, can you handle it? Because I'm going to come at you all evening. Well, that tipped the net, just pulling the ball slightly wide. Otherwise, that was going in. And we have to remember that Capriotti last year took out the world number one, Martina Hingis, in this very tournament, playing the type of tennis we're seeing her play right here. She just dominated Hingis in that final set. And Kornikova just misses that backhand. She's got to be disappointed there. That shot she owned in the match against Barabanchikova, but not tonight. 40-15. Game Capriotti. And that return is long. Five games to three. Capriotti leads 5-3 in the second set. And she's just rushing through this set. She's not only hitting the ball hard, she's walking fast to the return side. She walks up to the serve quick. She takes one bounce. The ball is up and served. Nice backhand there by Kornikova. Put some pressure on Capriotti. Hasn't had opportunity to put a lot of pressure on in this match.
Oh, right on the line. It can't get much better than this. Kornikova thought it was going to go wide, but you could tell from here, definitely it landed on the line. She just looked up at Capriotti and smiled. 15 all. Kornikova serving to just stay alive in this match. If she should lose her serve, that would be it. And Capriotti would move into the finals. Well, she didn't miss that by much. Hit that forehand like a rocket down the line. 30-15. Second serve. He's going to be there. Oh, what a shot. That's the best point we've had of the match. Both players all over the court. Great gets on both sides. See this great get by Kornikova. She lobs over Capriotti's head. Only one place Capriotti can go is down the line. Kornikova unable to cover. 30 all. A miscue by Capriotti. The ball took an awkward bounce. 42. So both players pulling out all the stops here. Kornikova a must. She owns game point. What a joy to watch Capriotti. She's really enjoying her game nowadays. Game. Kornikova. So Kornikova holds on. Capriotti still leads 5-4 in the second set. Now you can understand why Anna Kornikova is number eight in the world. She has been dominated from the opening hit by this lady right here, Jennifer Capriotti, and yet the score still reads 6-3, 5-4. And to be able to play this close with somebody that's hitting the ball as well as Jennifer is a real credit to Anna Kornikova. Anna's still trying to figure out a way to work around this and hold serve. This is the long point where the lob goes up over and the great get and winner by Capriotti. Time. To no avail though in the end result of that game. Kornikova holding serve and now Capriotti comes out to serve for the set and the match. Can Kornikova break Capriotti's serve? Oh, that's the kind of return you want and that Another forehand is just wide. What a great return by Kornikova. Well, the slight foot in the game of Capriotti opens the door slightly for Kornikova. Now, triple break point for Kornikova to pull back even in the second set to five all. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Kornikova, five games. What a wild shot by Capriotti. I don't know what in the world she was thinking of. Take a look at it here. No concentration at all. Thank you. So five all. What a turnaround. Next, the service. Fifteen. Momentum has definitely taken a shift here. Kornikova is starting to look confident. Capriotti starting to miss every shot.
Oh, nice lob. Oh, it's just long. So, Kornikova with six straight points. Actually, I should say eight straight. She won the last two of the previous silver scheme. There's nine straight points by Kornikova. 49. This is the reason she's ranked number eight in the world. She knows how to hang in there until things can start to turn around. And now she holds three points to hold serve and lead for the first time in any set in this match. 40-15. And she double faults. Actually, that's not quite correct. She did lead momentarily the first game of the first set when Capriotti double faulted three times. So Capriotti makes sure that, that overhead is put away. Kornikova running for everything. 43rd. Capriotti pulls back two of those game points from Kornikova. Huge point right here for Kornikova. Oh, that's a beauty. And Kornikova. That's more like the play you expect from number eight in the world. Kornikova leads for the first time in the second set, of little mistakes by Capriotti has led to this revitalized Kornikova. Look at this backhand up the line. Just a beauty. Capriotti had a chance to break Kornikova. Her set up an opportunity to break Kornikova in that ninth game of the second set. And after that miss of a, of a relatively easy shot, it's been all Kornikova. Capriotti serving to stay in this set and take it to a tiebreak. I'm sure the crowd would love to see a tiebreaker. Kornikova doesn't want to see a tiebreaker. Oh. Nice try there by Kornikova. It was a one-hand stretch. Tried to curl it back into the court. 15 love. Oh, that's just inside the line. Good recovery by Kornikova. Oh, I think it caught the line. Take a look at it here. 15 all. all curls in. Yes, catches the outside of the line. 15 all. So the balls that were just missing earlier in the match are starting to clip the lines for Kornikova. And what Andrew mentioned earlier, who has the fitness to hang in there? Oh, that just missed. Miss there by Capriotti brings it to Deuce. 30 all. 30 all. What? What? And a double fault by Capriotti gives Anna Kornikova a set point. Who would have imagined this? 
four or five games ago. What? Look at that ball toss, way, way out to the right. Thank you. Now a pressure second serve for Capriati. Not the howitzer forehand we saw earlier in this match. Oh, and it clips the tape, and there you and go. The second set. Konikova by the second five. set. Unbelievable turnaround in this match. So, one set all. 6-3, first set to Capriotti. 7-5, second set to Konikova. Don't go away. Anything could happen in this third set. Konikova is breathing a huge sigh of relief. She realized that her back was against the wall, and because of a little bit of a letdown by Capriotti, she was let back in that door just slightly, and she saw that slight crack of the door open up, and she lunged through there, lifting the level of her game, and now we have a real match on our hands. Both players Nine. playing superb you, tennis. Thank you. Goals down. Send the goals down. Final set. Konikova to serve. Well, I hate to admit this, but in Love case you've been wondering where I am, I've been down courtside expecting to walk on and interview Jennifer Capriati. Got to strike while the iron's hot. It's a long way from the commentary booth and that's the normal procedure. And uh, good news, we have a real match on our hands. Well, Capriati has really Fishing. gone off the boil. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that backhand there just didn't have anything on it. And earlier we would have seen it go back about three times as fast. This could come down to the fitness you were talking about there at the end, at the start, Andrew. And by the looks of it, it looks like, 30, just looking 30. at the two girls, that Kornikova is probably the fitter of the two as far as aerobic fitness. I, I think without doubt, I mean, Capriati uh, last year was visibly in better shape than she is now. She was really working hard on that uh, comeback. Capriotti's there. Oh, she won't. Well, she might get that. But no, that's just not deep enough. Forty for ten. And this is where Capriotti is really going to find things tough. Don, I'm sure you'll agree because uh, you've got to be honest and say that with all the publicity, etc., Kornikova has the bigger fan base here. And when it comes down to the line, Capriati is really going to have to deal with uh, that psychological pressure of, of knowing that uh, maybe slightly more people in the 47. crowd rooting for your opponent than there are for you. That could be a slight uh, factor. I don't think Capriati even thinks about that, th that type of stuff anymore. With everything she's gone through, I think she's having so much fun playing tennis. She and even Kornikova. probably enjoys Fisk that shot there. Set. Wonderful backhand on the line by Kornikova to open up this, for this third set. Great high toss by Kornikova. Launching that uh, five foot eight frame up into the air. And again, just the difference in the physiques. It really looks like Kornikova has a couple of inches on Capriati. <laughs> Love 15. But uh, they're the same height, five foot eight, and uh, particularly on the women's tour, Don, over the years, it's been very difficult to keep track of, of players' heights, particularly when you have up-and-coming up players in their teens, because Dockage, for example, has, has grown since we first saw her burst in on to the international scene. And uh, what you read in the player's handbook is not always the case when you're watching. Well, there's a great play there. Kornikova is just playing with renewed enthusiasm. She's going 
after 15. every shot. She believes she can win this match now. But a wonderful volley there by Capriotti. Even with the fitness and speed of Kornikova, she was unable to re run it down. of her life right now. For a set and a half, she 15, faced howitzers 30. out there. The balls were coming back at about 175 kilometers an hour. I think if we had a gun on it, we'd say that for sure. And they were coming right to the baseline. Now they're coming middle of no man's land at best, about probably uh, 50 kilometers an hour slower at least. So everything just looks like it's slow motion coming to her. She has all the time in the world to set up and do what she wants. Kornikova has not lost a game since she was down 3-5 in the second set. I think she's, she's won five straight games. I don't think she's lost a game since I ran down on the court to interview Capri <laughs> Capriati. Game, Kornikova. She leads by two games to the There's six straight games. Now she's saying, yes, this is the way it's supposed to be done. I'm supposed to be winning. She's supposed to be losing. And she's just praying that Capriotti doesn't get back on her game. Fifteen left. Well, make no mistake, she's got it in reserve. She's got it in reserve physically. Again, she's not in the same shape she was this time last year, but she can still go the distance. It'll be psychology that gets her, and Kornikova certainly has that department covered at the moment. 15 all. Well, whether she can do it or not, I'm not sure, but she's going to have to start hitting it at that kind of pace again, because if she keeps hitting it soft, Kornikova will run her all over the court. Kornikova starting to pick up the pace of her serve. That first serve missed, but it was 172 kilometers an hour. Ah, oh. uh, double fault. And this is what she does not want to do. She does not want to let Capriotti come back, break her serve, and get back on serve. Fizz fitness is a problem. Capriotti's probably saying, you know, I probably shouldn't have eaten that extra helping at Christmas and those few extra pieces of cake or pie at the uh, holidays. And maybe I should have run those few extra kilometers last month, but too late right now. Well, nice work by both players. Kornikova making Capriotti hit two extra shots to win that point. Great stretch there by Kornikova. Nothing she can do with this one. So I'm not sure if she broke a string here. We just take a last look at that winner there by Capriotti. But she chased strings, puts in her anti-vibration ball there at the bottom of the strings and break point for Capriotti. Jeez. You can see just no power in Capriotti's game now and I, I think she's just totally off the boil physically and now it's going to be up to the mental part. Can't she start watching the ball? She had a break point opportunity and barely hit that forehand. Look at that. That return was inside the surface line. And that's out. Advantage Konikova. Mm. 
game, Konikova. She leads by three games to left. So, Konikova, seven games in a row she's reeled off, leading three love, up a break here in this third and final set. Well, this is just an amazing turnaround. Anna Kornikova, who was completely on the ropes against Capriati. In fact, the score of 6-3 in that first set really is flattering to uh, Kornikova because she was absolutely pummeled. Finding her feet, asking yourself a few questions in the second set. And uh, now she's really playing outside herself. And uh, disguising whatever she had in that bottle for some reason. Yeah, I have no idea why she would disguise that, but Kornikova knows more than we know as she sits in that chair that she's been let back into this match. She did not work her way back into this match. Capriotti just literally gifted her back into the match. She's being gifted many points even now, and she's just hoping and praying that Capriotti doesn't get a second win and come back and play like she was playing because we know Capriotti could reel off six games of her own. Very it's unlikely to happen because I Thank think you. it's a fitness problem that we have out there. Yeah, and we just don't come back Thank to you. fitness. And there's Capriati's father, Stefano, who's uh, traveling with Jennifer through Hong Kong on their way to Australia. I love the team. And those kind of misses we're seeing right there. There's only two things that can cause it. One is you're just tired, muscles aren't working properly, or you've lost your concentration. And fitness can also cause you to lose your concentration. There's a wonderful forehand made by Capriati. <laughs> Amazing thing there yeah, was, you see Kornikova had it covered. She was in the right spot, and she still couldn't reach it. Well, Capriotti looked like she was in a hurry to win before, and now she looks like she's in a hurry to lose. Down double break point on her serve. Game. Funny goal, boy change, please. New balls. Looking at her father, Stefano, and he looks completely puzzled, like what in the world is going on? This girl was playing like world number one for a set and a half, and now nothing. Well, he just said something to her. He's sitting right there beside her. Well, he wouldn't, uh, wouldn't get away with that in the WTA tour. No, that would be a fine for sure. Fifteen. I think Capriotti was trying to hit Kornikova. You know, if it hits her body before it bounces, then she wins the point. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen. Well, we were talking about the fact that she'd lost eight straight games. It's... Uh, Eight straight games, but she's hardly winning a point. That's the scary part. Look at this. 40. One of the problems that can happen is if she starts playing so badly, Kornikova could start losing her concentration and start playing badly. Game, Kornikova. She leads by five games to love. I think this time uh, you have to go down to the court. <laughs> and go down in a hurry. That's right. Kornikova leading five love. Nine straight games she's reeled off here in this semifinals of the Watson Water Challenge here at Victoria Park in the Causeway Bay area of Hong Kong. We had a few clouds earlier today, but broke out to be absolutely clear blue skies. Just a wonderful day. Couldn't be better. Perfect conditions for the players, just a bit of a breeze, just enough to lift the flags now and then. 
And right there on your left, Jennifer Capriotti. Looks like she's in a hurry to get down to Australia. <laughs> One way or another, win or lose. And Anna Kornikova trying to prove that she belongs at number eight in the world. Time. Nobody likes to lose a bagel set. Six loves, so Capriotti will probably try to do her best to hold on with that wonderful forehand. 15 love. And she goes, oh, there it is. That's what I should have been hitting. Kornikova venturing the net because she had to. The ball was so short by Capriotti on the backhand. Very nice serve by Capriotti. 169 kilometers an hour, but more the placement than anything else. Shows the quickness of Kornikova. 30-15. Many double faults here by Capriotti in this match. Just too short, and that brings up match point for Anna Kornikova. And who would have believed this just 30 minutes ago? She was so far down and out, there was no chance for her to come back. And that's it. Anna Kornikova wins this match. Unbelievable turnaround. She loses the first set, 6-3, comes back, wins. 7-5, 6 love, reeling off 10 straight games. I'm sure she is in. The state of shock. She cannot believe she actually won this. Look at her shake her head. This is... Ah, she threw a racket in the crowd. Well, there goes Jennifer Capriotti. Definitely one of the most talented players on the circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Jennifer Capriotti as she leaves the court. Thank you, Jennifer. In a moment, we will have Andrew Sams on the court with an interview with Anna Kornikova from Russia, moving into the finals to play either Yelena Dokic or Elena Dim Dimentieva. And of course, that other semifinals will be coming up later this evening. Interspersed between that will be a semifinal doubles match, which will be coming up shortly. So don't go away. The action is fast and furious here at Victoria Park. An incredible match here in the semifinals. But for now, Ladies and Andrew gentlemen, Sams. one more round of applause, please, for Anna Kornikova. <laughs> Anna, congratulations. Huge turnaround at the end of the second set. What were you telling yourself? Well, I was just trying to hang in there. I know that uh, you know Jennifer was playing extremely well the first set, and up to five three, she she completely you know was killing me. So I really had to hang in there, and I told myself that you know anything could happen, and I just tried to get back into the into the match, into the game, and just try to play point by point. And uh, you know it paid off. I uh, was running after every ball, and and uh, you know, I was just happy to make it through to 5-all, and then after that I got really confident and I started to play my game. We've seen a huge improvement in your game over the past 12 months in particular. Is your fitness and concentration exactly where you want it to be? Well, not, not right now, but uh, at the end of last year, definitely. But you know, this is my second uh, match of the year, so I'm still not moving too well, and you know, my reaction is a bit slow. But uh, you know, after this match, I think hopefully I'll be on the right track, and uh, you know, for Sydney, I'll be definitely ready. You've got a huge fan base uh, around the world, particularly here in Hong Kong. You seem to be. 
you seem to be able to live with that and enjoy it. Well, I would like to thank all of you uh, for the support. Uh, you know, I've really appreciated. I'm glad that uh, you guys uh, have fun and. Uh, just, uh, I'm really thankful and I'm really excited and I'm glad to be out here. Okay, congratulations again. Good luck tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Anna Kornikova.